Ah yes, clickbait. It's the lying scheme with a bunch of arrows and circles on millions, if not billions of videos on YouTube, only for views, likes and subscribers from people all across the globe. And there is one record holder for this factor, bright side. This massive creator describes themselves as a fact channel made to educate people around the world about everything in the entire universe. However they fail, using obviously fake thumbnails and titles and also facts that are either under doubt or outdated. Ever since the channel was made in 2017, and sadly, over 43,200,000 people have fell into the trap of lies and clickbait, making even PBSians subscribers outnumbered. Now, recently, almost two weeks ago to be exact, Brightside made a video about dinosaurs that could kill Tyrannosaurus Rex. I watched this video, reacting to it, and all there was was just outdated facts. Today, I'll be reviewing this piece of failed quote unquote education and then stating how the video could have been better and more educational, before we review, I just want to say that the thumbnail isn't even showing a T-Rex, but an Allosaurus and Stegosaurus fighting each other, which for a video with a T-Rex as the target would be unethical. Now let's get right into it. It was a 40 feet long and 12 feet tall beast, a king of dinosaurs. Its massive and muscular body weighed up to 8 tons. An inaccuracy from the fucking get go already? The T Rex was actually heavier, 10.6 tons to be exact, according to a recent 3D model by Dan Fox and Toxic Midget 21. Also, why the fuck is that a shark tooth? Actual T Rex teeth look much different. T Rex is not a shark. It's a bird-like terrestrial predator with better intelligence than one. Its serrated teeth were sharp, and its jaws had a bite so strong, it could crush a car. The creature had two powerful legs. It lived in forested river valleys all across North America, almost 70 million years ago. Bruh, it evolved 68 million years ago and lasted until 66 million years ago. I'm talking about the most famous movie star among dinosaurs, T-Rex. Why does the dash and the capital R always have to be there in these kinds of videos? It was very smart, with a brain twice as big as that of any large meat-eating dino. It was slower than other hunters, developing a speed of up to 12 miles per hour. Its other weakness was its small arms. No one even cares about the useless arms joke anyway. And in fact Rex's arms were pretty strong and have been estimated to carry anything below 180 kilograms. So even the Cocado Avocado is a beach ball to it. A very recent theory suggests that the arms were tiny so they could avoid getting bitten by other individuals of the species. Some scientists think they were just an evolutionary leftover, like the pelvic bones of some snakes. But others believe T-Rex used its arms to hunt. Well basically it's not gonna hunt fucking insects that don't even support its diet with those 10 centimeter claws. Its 4 inch claws helped the animal out. T-Rex was undoubtedly frightening, but surprisingly, there were even scarier dinosaurs in the past. Why, just why, this depiction of Spinosaurus was debunked almost a decade ago. Why do you still have to use it? I'm almost speechless, can't believe it's like 14 years and you still use an estimate even worse than the 18 meter 20.9 ton size on Wikipedia. Even searching up Spinosaurus in Google will bring up updated reconstructions of the dinosaur. Are you getting all this shit from Monsters Resurrected? It's such a very crappy source that no one in the paleontology community believes it. The Spino is literally awesome broified like yours and it's shown to kill a Carcharodontosaurus and a Sarcosuchus which would actually be more powerful than it in real life. 95 million years ago, the world changed, but Spinosaurus could not change with it. Spinosaurus.
it's so ironic how you said a spinner could kill a fucking T-Rex. To be honest the spinner is fucking actually smaller than T-Rex in mass at 13.1 meters and 6.8 tons. Even in water the T-Rex can finish it. I mean, a study by Laramendi et al. 2021 suggested that all dinosaurs could actually swim quite well, not just the fucking spinner. Also, with the tyrant lizard's lower jaw towering over the spinner's rostrum, it would be easy for the tyrannosaur to bite the spinner's neck until it bleeds to death. The fight is actually more unfair than many think. Also, if you look closely at the measuring tape while the narrator says the spinner is 18 meters long, the tape is mistakenly pointing upwards, like as if the spinner was 18 meters tall and the animal was even longer which is likely a mistake but also mega fucking bullshit if intentional, you should rather be thinking the Spinosaurus as a giant reptilian stalk and not a bloodthirsty ass monster that could shred any mega theropod to pieces in seconds. Had long spines on its back, they could grow up to 7 feet long and were connected by folds of skin. They formed something that looked like a sail. Some scientists think it was a hump Spinosaurus used to store water. <laughs> <laughs> this dino had dense bones and short hind limbs. If you say the Spinosaurus had short hind limbs, why the fuck aren't you giving it short hind limbs? This is a literal bra moment. Researchers believe that these dinos could use their flat and wide clawed feet for paddling. This was the first dino that could ever swim. Seriously? There are a bunch of dinosaurs earlier than it that are thought to have a semi-aquatic lifestyle, like the Iguanodontlerdusaurus, possibly the primitive Ceratopsian Coreaceratops, and a new study even found that Baryonyx, Spinosaurus's older, bare-backed relative, had dense bones for diving. However, it was the first semi-aquatic non-avian dinosaur to be discovered, which was what you meant to say. Unfortunately, it couldn't process smells like most other theropods. I think you're saying unfortunately because you want the fucking Spino to kill Tyrannosaurus most of the time, right? It's never gonna fucking happen because literally three fucking minutes ago I stated that Tyrannosaurus Rex has a bunch of advantages that would help it in killing the Egyptian spine lizard. These were a group of two-legged carnivorous dinosaurs what? that appeared on Earth 230 million years ago. That's why the animals the creature hunted could hide from it on land. The Spino Dino spent most of its time in the water. It roamed the swamps of North Africa and mostly fed on fish, big prehistoric sharks, and sometimes, other dinosaurs. Wait a fucking second. Is that a fucking megalodon? The silhouette looks very like to Britannica's reconstruction of the animal. Plus these animals didn't even coexist. You could have just used a silhouette of Squalicorax, which was a shark that lived with Spinosaurus and not just shit in a megalodon to represent a shark in cum cum. Heck, if it was actually an adult megalodon I'd fucking scream of a literal fanboy reference. It had a long, thin, and narrow snout like a crocodile. Unlike other dinos of its kind, which had curved teeth, Spinosaurus had conically shaped straight teeth. Giganotosaurus, which is the Greek word for giant southern lizard, where the fuck did the go? Is this a reference to that one kid's show? Was considered the largest meat-eating dino until Spinosaurus was found. How? Spinosaurus was found over eight decades before Giganotosaurus was found. Spino being discovered in 1912 and then described in 1915, whilst Giganotosaurus was discovered in 1993 and then described in 1995. And just like Spinosaurus there's no way it'd be heavier than T-Rex either because it's literally three tons lighter than the Tyrannosaurid. It lived around 100 million years ago in South America, around 30 million years before T-Rex appeared there. First off, Giganotosaurus lived 99 to 97 million years ago. And second, Tyrannosaurus lived in North America, not South America. I can't believe you said it lived in North America at the beginning of the video but then you changed your mind. What a bunch of face palms. 
It was longer and taller, but more slender than T-Rex. Yeah, more slender. That's why it was lighter, and in mass terms smaller. And while T-Rex had two fingers, this giant had three. It walked upright. If you said it walked upright, you'd be making dinosaurs drag their tails. On its two big and very strong legs, its tail was pointed and thin, which helped the creature make fast turns while running and keep its balance. The animal can move at a speed of up to- This growl literally gives me Temple Run 2 vibes. 31 miles per hour. T-Rex's maximum speed was 25 miles per hour at the most. Bruh, you said a speed of 12 miles per hour, and a study from 2017 suggests it had a top speed of 17 miles per hour. Any faster than that, and the giant can lose its balance and fall over. Giganotosaurus had two arms with sharp claws. It was mostly an opportunistic meat-eater feeding on everything it found on its way. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... F <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> its bite wasn't as strong as T-Rex's, but it still managed to deal with some bigger animals, like herbivore dinosaurs. Maybe there was even an Argantinosaurus among them. The biggest animals ever found. First, Argentinosaurus did not coexist with Giganotosaurus, as both animals lived in different formations. Second, why the fuck aren't you pronouncing it properly? The A should not be ignored. And finally, did you just forget the blue whale's fucking existence? The whale is a whole 115 tons heavier than the Argentinosaurus. Looks like a reference to that one title of one of your earlier videos. It's hard to imagine how Giganotosaurus could take down a 50-ton beast on its own. No, it was 84 tons. If it was 50 it'd be smaller than a fucking Brachiosaurus. That's why scientists think they may have hunted in groups. The animal's only weakness was its small brain. It was twice smaller than T-Rex's. This means the T could at least win a chess game. It would kill the Giganotosaurus anyway. It's larger in mass, more intelligent, has a stronger bite, has forward-facing eyes as great as an owl, along with other better senses. So you can stop brainwashing kids on the internet and telling them that T-Rex wasn't the largest terrestrial carnivore. Big retractable sickle-shaped claws in the creature's feet are great for cutting. No one cares about the disemboling theory anymore. It's more likely that dromaeosaurs use their sickle claws to pin their prey to the ground like modern birds of prey do, and young or small individuals are even thought to have used them to climb up trees. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Utah Raptor. <laughs> You serious? How the fucking hell would a Utahraptor even kill a T-Rex? Even though it's like half a ton it's never gonna stand a chance against the Rex's 10.6 ton mass. I have to say this is the dumbest entry on the list. That's a mini T-Rex that lived 125 million years ago. You mean it's a huge terrestrial hawk that lived 139 million years ago. Also why the fuck is it depicted here having the same general dromios or body plan? It was actually much bulkier than shown here. If a big T-Rex was coming for you, you could hide under a rock or some other place where it wouldn't be able to reach you. But there would be no place where its mini version couldn't follow you. Literally right now. Rather than saying how it could kill a T-Rex, you're literally stating random facts that aren't even that relevant to the fight. Discovered in Utah, strong, toothy, and armored with huge claws, more than 9 inches long, an adult Utah Raptor was 20 feet long and 5 feet tall at the hip. Very ironic how you used 6 meters for the length of my favorite Dromaeosaur but used 18 meters for the fucking height of Spinosaurus. These creatures were covered in feathers. This is why fully grown animals look like gigantic turkeys. The Utah Raptors' main weakness was their size. They were a bit smaller than many other dinos, but these guys made up for that by hunting in packs. There isn't even any evidence of Utah Raptor hunting in packs. There was a mass grave found to have six Utah Raptors and a possible Iguanodont carcass. 
but that would have been a predator trap similar to the famous Labrador pits in Los Angeles. It's thought that the raptors were attracted, trapped and soon succumbed one by one as the carcass rotted. Thus, if any large dinosaur like T-Rex managed to fight a pack of Utah raptor, the pack wouldn't even survive one. I mean, dromaeosaurids can't just leap onto a dinosaur's back and scar it to fucking death. Which means a different lizard, in Greek, was a massive carnivore reaching 40 feet in length and weighing 2 tons. Wrong. It would have been around 8 to 9 meters and 1.4 tons. This guy also has no way of beating a fucking T-Rex because almost every ability it has is a disadvantage against the tyrant Lizard King. It roamed the Earth around 150 million years ago. Similar to T-Rex, this dino had strong back legs and a large snout. Its mouth was full of sharp teeth. The animal easily lost them when eating, but they usually grew back. Allosaurus was already fully grown by the age of 15, and its lifespan was around 28 years. Still facts that have almost nothing to do with the fight. When can this stop? The creature had a short neck and a long, narrow skull. Disproportionately big compared to the rest of its body. This dino also had a pair of horns above its eyes, and ridges along the top of its nasal bones leading to those horns. Since when the fuck were Allosaurus's horns meant to be weapons? They are more likely for display. Allosaurus chased big herbivore dinosaurs. When several Allosauruses gathered in a group, they could take down even such colossal creatures as Apatosaurus. More mispronouncing? Even the narrator or character of a fucking kid's show can pronounce better than this. But scientists still doubt if they could cooperate, because these dinos were generally not too friendly toward one another. Some of the animal's bones had an hourglass shape. I don't even see hourglass shaped bones here which made them lighter and reduced their strength. They were similar to the hollow bones modern birds have. Another weakness of this dino was its bite. It was less powerful than that of some modern animals, like lions, alligators, or leopards. Scientists think Allosaurus may have used its skull as a hatchet. That theory is disproven now. And no modern alternative was ever found from the dinosaur. The Rhizinosaurus was one of the freakiest dinos out there. It lived 100 to 60 million years ago. No. It lived 70 million years ago. If it lived 60 million years ago, we would have solid true evidence of non-avian dinosaurs outliving the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. It had a very small head and bizarre feet with four toes, unlike their ancestors that had three. Its body was covered with feathers. We don't have solid evidence for feathers on Therizinosaurus. There is a Therizinosaur called Bepiosaurus that was discovered with feathers. But it was a primitive Therizinosaur and it didn't belong to the family of Therizinosauridae which Therizinosaurus belongs to. Also if Therizinosaurus was to have feathers then they would have been mostly filamentous like fuzz. This weirdo had the longest claws scientists have ever recorded. They were three feet long each. These claws were curved and sharp. The dino used them to collect plants for lunch. Scientists are still not sure if this creature was a herbivore or carnivore, or both. The dino had a long neck. There were no teeth in its upper jaw. Its wrist bones were like the ones modern birds have. The Rhizinosaurus might have evolved from a meat-eating to plant-eating animal throughout time. Unfortunately, in comparison with meat-eaters, herbivore dinosaurs were much weaker. Have you seen a fucking Ceratopsian or Ankylosaur before? These creatures can fatally blow even the largest of theropods. And still, those claws can make its enemies think twice. Yes, indeed. But that doesn't mean it'll kill the Rex most of the time. One bite on the neck and the Therizinosaurus is done. Many of these fights are dumb and so fucking unfair in this video. High Spined Lizard, or a Crocanthosaurus. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Holy shit! Lived 110 million years ago. It was two feet shorter than T-Rex but had a similar body structure. You say it's two feet shorter and yet you fucking undersized a Crocanthosaurus to 3.3 meters. I literally find this complete bullshit. Like T-Rexes, these creatures often went after bigger and more challenging animals. For example, with those backbones so hard, it seemed as if they were carrying a giant turtle shell, like Ankylosaur. What the fucking fuck? That is not okay! 
seriously, how the fucking hell in God's name would a Crocanthosaurus have plates of osteoderms on its fucking hump? I don't know where you got that fucking statement of the hard backbone from, but literally that doesn't mean it had some sort of armor. Even the spikes on Papu's model don't even go as far as this. It's so ironic how you literally over-exaggerated a theropod fucking smaller and weaker than T-Rex so you can fucking brainwash everyone that it could kill the tyrant lizard. This lie is literally as bullshit, if not worse than the statement you said about Utahraptor killing the T-Rex. The high-spined lizard was very territorial. It had a brain shaped like the letter S and an excellent sense of smell. What made a Crocanthosaurus vulnerable was its small arms. And still, the creature used them to hunt other animals surprisingly well. The dino pulled its catch close to its torso which was like a hug you wouldn't be able to escape from. Well, that doesn't even bring an advantage against the T-Rex anyway. Diplodocus lived 150 million years ago. The 90-foot-long creature was possibly the longest dinosaur ever. Definitely not. There were other sauropods longer than it, like Argentinosaurus. Its tail, which could reach 46 feet in length, was the longest tail of any animal ever. And its neck was more than 20 feet long. The underside of the dino's tail had two rows of bones, which made the creature even stronger and more mobile. Diplodocus didn't look scary, long-necked, gentle, peacefully munching on plants, until it used its tail like a whip, making even the scariest meat-eaters back away. This tail was the center of the dino's mass. Wasn't Diplodocus's center of mass closer to the hip socket? Also that popular tail whip theory also has a few flaws. According to my friend Tyrannoraptor on YouTube, or Theropoda on Discord, the sauropod would have some of its tail vertebrae broken after whipping. He also said that the Diplodocus can get fucking deaf from the so-called crack. So the tail whip can hurt a T-Rex but it will also injure the 20-ton herbivore making it struggle. And old Dippy's neck is positioned within the range of the tyrant's jaws, so if it gets bitten by the theropod, it will struggle even more. Which is why Diplodocus could move very quickly. Scientists first thought, this is a lizard-like animal, but its posture was more like that of an elephant. And yet you gave your giga the posture of a fucking kangaroo at one point. Plus Diplodocus had nasal openings on its forehead. Nope that is disproven. And you even put the nostrils on the snout rather than the forehead. So why say they're on the forehead? Oh the irony. The dino's weakness was its small teeth and weak force bite. And the fucking tail whip shit as well as I explained before. Quetzalcoatlus was the biggest flying animal ever. Oh wow, you've never heard of Hatsigopteryx. It's likely more robust than Quetzalcoatlus which would add to the mass. We don't even know what is the largest flying animal to be honest because as darkids are often so fragmentary. Also, refer by species, not genera. Quetzalcoatlus northropi was the famous giant, but its newly discovered cousin Quetzalcoatlus lawsoni was barely the size of a fucking pteranodon. And the animal will be as easy if not easier as the Utahraptor for the T-Rex to kill. Five unfair fights, oh my fucking god. It lived 70 million years ago. Didn't it live to the KPG extinction as well? When controlled the skies of North America, it was a toothy, pin-headed- Pin-headed? Ketsi's head is actually quite big compared to its fucking body. Creature with a blunt snout. It was as tall as a giraffe and weighed 550 pounds. Quetzalcoatlus had a small torso and long neck and legs. Its wings were short compared to the rest of its body, but still long enough to stretch for 40 feet. Why does its takeoff look like it's being sucked into a fucking mothership? Scientists think this animal could fly at a speed of up to 80 miles per hour and travel 400 miles in a day. This dino was weaker than, let's say, T-Rex or most other carnivores of that time, but it had powerful muscles, which helped the animal rise into the air in the blink of an eye. Why the fuck did you call Quetzalcoatlus a dinosaur? It's a fucking pterosaur LMAO. And also how the fuck would flight muscles help it in fighting? Literally this video ended without a subscribe reminder. Bruh. Okay, so now that we have reviewed this entire 8 and a half minute video, it's now time to share my thoughts. Well, it's literally as dumb and inaccurate as hell. There's a bunch of shit in this video. Outlandish entries, exaggerations, outdated facts, outdated sizes, 
mispronouncing of some of the names. An Argantinosaurus, Apatosaurus. Wrong ages. A bunch of typos in the labels though they're probably mistakes, outdated reconstructions, shitting in random animals and say they could kill off the T-Rex without good proof, not even talking about how an animal could kill the Rex in some entries, this literally breaks through the rooftop of Clickbait Castle. I'm not trying to harass, threat or attack Brightside, but this video literally makes Mega Dinosaurs fight videos look accurate. The only dinosaur ever featured that could kill a T-Rex, was the fucking Diplodocus. That's it. Most if not all of their paleontology related videos don't ever escape in accuracy prison. They literally made a video about Megalodon living in the Mariana Trench in 2018 which is complete bullshit because it's clickbait as fuck and literally doesn't even care about the lack of whales in the trench and whales were a major food source for Megalodon. Luckily, I have a way to fix the video to be as accurate as possible. And I will discuss it right now. By the way, Goji Center has a better video of animals that could kill T-Rex and if you want to watch it the link is in the description. The list of animals will be changed, since most of them in the video are unable to kill a Tyrannosaurus most of the time. And no I am not including a giant crocodile with an absolutely toxic and bullshit fanbase. The amount of animals will also be reduced from 8 to 5, the reason I'll get to later. The first entry on the list would be Triceratops Prisus. Although not as large as Tyrannosaurus Rex at 8.7 meters and 8 tons, this formidable herbivore still has a great chance of defeating the tyrant lizard. Contrary to popular belief, this ceratopsid could actually fight with great maneuverability. The hind limbs were erect like those of mammals, but the forelimbs sprawled to the sides somewhat like most reptiles, so the dinosaur can turn around fast in any direction whilst facing its foe. The deadly 2.8 meter skull was connected by a ball and socket joint giving the head more maneuverability in a 360 degree range. Additionally, the Triceratops can impale the theropod's internal organs with its meter-long horns, killing the king in just a few seconds. The Triceratops would win, around 70% of the time. And there'll be even more herbivores in this list to prove that they are definitely not theropod fodder. One of these is Ankylosaurus magniventris popularly dubbed the tank of the Mesozoic, and there's an obvious reason why. Judging by Fadino's new skeletal reconstruction of this absolute unit, large specimens could grow up to 8.4 meters in length and 9.3 tons in weight, and possibly even outweighing Scotty, the largest T-Rex specimen, at a huge 8.9 meters in length and 11 tons in weight. Talking about defense, the animal was, like many people know, protected with thick plates of osteoderms, which not only protected the top half of the body, but also the head and eyelids. Another obvious factor is the deadly club at the end of the ankylosaur's tail. A study in 2009 estimated that ankylosaurids could swing these clubs at a lateral range of 100 degrees. One whip from the ankylosaurus right into the tyrant lizard's skull or femur, and the theropod would suffer drastic pain that can soon lead to fatality. The Ankylosaurus would win around 75% of the time. It's very odd how Ankylosaurus is such a popular dinosaur well known for its great defense, but somehow Brightside didn't put it as a T-Rex killer in their video. So ironic. The next killer is in fact the largest animal to ever walk the earth. Argentinosaurus huincalensis, at a length of 33.6 meters and weighing 84 tons. That's almost 8 Scotties combined. This giant herbivore may not look intimidating but apparently any theropod can definitely lose to it. While there isn't too much to say about how it could kill a T-Rex, I'll try and be as constructive as possible. With this animal's 84 ton mass, the sauropod would kick the theropod with its forelimbs or stomp on its body and crush it to death. The neck is also positioned towering over even the tyrant lizard king's 1.6 meter long head, so the Argentinosaurus doesn't risk getting it bitten by the predator's 6 ton bite. Although it's known from fragmentary remains, some of its titanosaurian relatives have also been found with osteoderms. However, they were not like those of ankylosaurs. Instead of being plates, they were more like large, tough scales, 
with some being spikes. There has been some debate in the past few years whether they were used for defense or not, but a 2021 paper suggested the former, judging by bite marks from Borusukid crocodilians and Ablisaurids on Titanos or Osteoderms. So apparently these osteoderms could be used to kill T-Rex in a fight if close enough being so large compared to the tyrant's lizard king and given that it would crush it easily, the Argentinosaurus would always kill it, winning 100% of the time. A similar titanosaur called Arlamosaurus sanguinensis, likely did coexist with Tyrannosaurus, but I used Argentinosaurus due to being larger. Any large titanosaur, Alamosaurus included, can still beat the theropod though. Very pointless how bright side shown Argentina saw us a couple of times on the video but used the weaker Diplodocus instead on the list. Our fourth contender is the only carnivore on the list, Dinosuchus hatchery. The king of the crocodilians was actually larger than many think. In 2020, Fadino did a skeletal of the enormous alligator relative, and estimated the largest specimen. TMM 43,632 1, at a mind blowing length of 14.12 meters and mass from 13.8 to 15.4 tons, putting even the more popularly feared Mosasaurus Hoffmanni to shame, which on the other hand is 12.2 meters long and weighing around 10.3 tons. Literally, many of Fadino's skeletals are enormous compared to what people usually think. Dino Sucus hatchery has a bunch of advantages adding to its strength. Although it wouldn't have been very agile on land, it had even more of an edge in water. Again, just like many animals on this list, it also had tough osteoderms embedded into the skin. Just like modern crocodilians, which would be hard for any theropod to break into. Just like its living relatives, it could also smack the rex with its armored tail, delivering damage without any warning. Its powerful bite shouldn't be ignored, with the highest estimates at 10.4 tons. Compare that to the tyrant's 6 ton bite force. However, one of the Alligatoroid's most effective attacks is something not found in most other giant crocodilomorphs, the death roll. Using this technique, it can rip chunks of flesh from the theropod in seconds. One lucky ambush and the king is done. On land the terrible croc wins around 75% of the time, but if the fight takes place in water, then the Dino Sucus's chances increase to around 90%. Our final T-Rex destroyer is the largest of all terrestrial mammals. And nope, it's not the 17-ton rhino relative Paraceraferium transoralicum. It's Paleoluxodon nomadicus, sometimes called the Asian straight-tusked elephant. This massive proboscidean from the Pleistocene of the Indian subcontinent rivals even the famous Diplodocus halorum in weight, estimated by Asiel Aramendi at a shoulder height of 5 meters and a body mass of 22 tons, over double the weight of the largest T-Rex. Onto the weapons this gargantuan has, one of the most obvious are its long tusks, which are able to gore the Rex's scaly, but smooth skin. If this doesn't work, the Paleoluxodon can make short work of trampling or even kicking it to death with its 22 ton weight, which elephants are in fact known to do. However, unlike the other killers on the list, this one was likely more intelligent, given that elephants are one of the most intelligent animals on the planet. Thanks to this advantage, it likely has the ability to toss objects at the theropod, such as rocks, with its muscular trunk. After all, Elephants have been known to throw stuff at beings with their trunks to injure or even kill them. The only way a Tyrannosaurus rex is ever gonna win against a Paleoluxodon nomadicus, is to attack from behind without getting kicked. The elephant would win around 85% of the time. And that's it for the improved list of animals that can actually kill a T-Rex. However, that's not all. We'll now move on to some honorable mentions which were originally meant to be on the list but either some are debated if they could actually kill a rex most of the time or are more likely to die. I wanted good variety in the improved list, or just didn't have much facts to state how it could kill the T-Rex. All three are which are why I reduced the amount of animals to five. However, these animals still a great have a chance of defeating a Tyrannosaurus. Anyways, let's start off with Edmontosaurus anectons. I'm not even joking here, 
This was actually meant to be on the list. Had Ressort's Aunt Weekass fodder shown in a movie just for theropods to eat. Whilst an average individual was around 10 meters and 5 tons, a huge specimen from Montana's Museum of the Rockies, catalogued as MOR 1142, nicknamed X-Rex, is around 15.3 meters long and weighs 18 tons. This makes Edmontosaurus anectans one of, if not the largest biped to have ever walked on the planet, almost as big as Paleoloxodon nomadicus, so we'll be using an 18-ton specimen like X-Rex. Hadrosaurs have robust hind limbs with room for enough muscles to create powerful kicks with even a single leg. Like other non-avian dinosaurs, they had a well-developed tail muscle, known as a cordofemoralis longus, stretching from the femur's fourth trochanter. This muscle would help the hadrosaur's hind limbs have more mobility, especially when running. It would also aid the herbivore in kicking as well. Another advantage is the large and deep tail. For X-Rex, the tail measured more than 7.5 meters long, which is two black rhinos, each measuring 3.75 meters long, put together. It wouldn't be as shattering as the tail of Ankylosaurus, but the duckbill would still give a deadly, yet impressive wallop. Hadrosaurs may have even bitten their predators, even without teeth. According to Britannic Earth Life and Sciences editor, John P. Rafferty, in a 2010 textbook, they would have had space in their skulls for powerful jaw muscles. Although hadrosaurs are often called the duckbill dinosaurs, this isn't the case. The bill actually turns downwards, Based on a skull specimen of Edmontosaurus catalogued LACM 23502. With this formidable bill and jaw muscles, it's not impossible that the Edmontosaurus can bite the Rex. I didn't put it on the final list however because it's likely going to win close to a tie. I'd say it'd win 45% of the time. After all, in the final list we're using animals that are more likely to kill a T-Rex than get killed by one. However, with the fight between these two giants not even being a mismatch, the Edmontosaurus is still in quite a good range of ending the king's life, so I put it as an honorable mention. Next up is Diplodocus Halorum. While this 20-ton giant would be more likely to win against a Rex than die to one, I just didn't have much to state about it. The only kind of advantageous ability differing it from the Argentinosaurus, is how it could likely rear up on its hind legs, as the center of mass was close to the hip socket. However, just like the Argentinosaurus, it could just crush the king with its limbs easily without having to rear and not just waste its time standing upright about to smash. Another popularly theorized attack which was included in Brightside's failure, is the whip tail ability, but as I said on the review this is doubted, and all Dippy would get injuries. And also, like I said before, the neck is quite close in range to the Tyrannosaur's jaws, making it quite easy for the Diplodocus to get bitten. I already have Argentinosaurus on the list, and I don't want to waste time putting in a smaller sauropod with the same good advantages but with additional dubious abilities. Other than that, Diplodocus would win around 75% of the time. Finally is everybody's favorite shark, Otodus Megalodon. Again I didn't have much to state about how it could kill a T-Rex. All the Megalodon would do is rip it to shreds easily in a matter of seconds with its 18.5 ton bite force, because it's definitely pretty overpowered against most of, if not every single creature to have lived on the entire planet. With estimates ranging from 16 meters and 61.5 tons to 20.3 meters and 127.2 tons, it's a very tough giant not to mess with. If the 127.2 ton figure is correct, then it would probably be the second largest animal to have ever lived outweighing the more popular holder of that title, the fin whale, or Balaenoptera physalis, which is longer than the megalodon but has a maximum weight of only 114 tons. Although it's very deadly in the water, the megatooth shark can get beached easily on the land and eventually die of suffocation or the T-Rex finishing it to the death. The megalodon would definitely win around 100% of the time if the fight takes place in water, but would only ever win around 10% of the time on land if the theropod is close enough to its enormous jaws. 
so that was my improved list, and the honorable mentions originally planned for it, there would be other fixes, like the title having prehistoric animals instead of dinosaurs, because a pterosaurian Quetzalcoatlus is shown, and two of the animals on my list aren't dinosaurian, others, including the awful statements and outdated reconstructions should be replaced as well. Anyways, this was the entire review and revamp of the most misinforming dinosaur fact video on YouTube. I'll see you guys in another video, Mikhail the Komodo Dragon out.